It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebuka Obiucha and it's day 335, 335 days since over 200 girls were abducted from the government secondary school in Chibok and they're still not back with their families. We continue to speak about it and hoping that very soon, with all the efforts of our Nigerian uh, security operatives up north, that they will be found soon enough and return to their families. And speaking of the efforts of our military, they've continued to regain territory for Nigeria. Um, we did hear that the famous or infamous town of Baga has been reclaimed back by the Nigerian uh, military and we continue to hear cheering news about all of the exploits that uh, our security operatives are having in the northeastern part of Nigeria and it's very cheering news to hear that um, when we talk security these days it's mostly positive. Of course there's still a few um, unfortunate stories we hear uh, here and there but for the most part it looks like things or the federal government is on top of things and we hope that continues and doesn't uh, get uh, distracted again by politics. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about politics on the show today, politics and um, all of that concerning the campaigns. But before we get to that, there's something that's very significant that's happened this week. Uh, as of this time last year, there was a, uh, an immense tragedy that hit Nigeria um, with especially the youth. Uh, the Nigerian Immigration Service did hold a, a mass interview session <laughs> or exam session across the country that ended up killing a number of Nigerian youth, and it's been a year since that happened, and we're going to be talking about that on the show today, starting out off immediately with my special guests in the house. I have here with me Bola Dale Adekoya. Thanks for coming here today. It's a pleasure to be here. And of course, Emmanuel Tafa. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, too. Um, before we get to the NIS uh, issue, I just want us to touch quickly, very quickly on security, because I know it's, it's something that is sort of connected, of course, to the NIS. Uh, if, if people were secure, I'm sure people would have lost their lives. But let's talk about the Northeast for a bit. You know, a lot is happening in the Northeast these days. We're hearing of military, of uh, territory being reclaimed, and there's a lot of mixed reactions to the federal government. People are excited about it, but there's also people saying, why hasn't this happened uh, in the last five years? Do you think we're actually going to meet the, the deadline by March 28th, like Mr. President? Because it's looking like it is. Um, thank you, Ibuka. I, <clears throat> I remember vividly, I think I was here a fortnight ago, and we discussed about security. And I think then you asked me a question that, that what should be the uh, first two most important in Nigeria we actually want to see. I, we talked about regaining the territories and also the Chibor girls. Um, and from all indications, it seems the, the, the Nigerian military has been able to live up to that expectation. Uh, we might, it's not yet Uhuru, however, I think we've been able to achieve a great deal with it. Um, people, have, people have raised questions on the issue of how come uh, we are having positive results now when it's just a few weeks to election? How come the Nigeria military are suddenly are working to his uh, responsibility after the six weeks uh, postponement? Is this a political game or is this, is this a political strategy? Um, I, I, I wouldn't want to dwell on the issue of politics or strategy, but I want to tell you what I know. Uh, why, what I know is that uh, within the last two months, neighboring countries, Chad, Niger, Cameroon, have, um, have they, they collaborated with Nigeria and formed a multi uh, tax force, and uh, they've been working together. I think majorly, um, one of the major issues around the success of Boko Haram attack is that whenever they attack the town in Borno or Adamawa, they easily get off because they have a neighboring state that is not so cooperating. Yeah. But when you have a multi tax force now, that everybody's working hand together also, um, definitely you see results like this. When we have uh, the military also, we talked about uh, they've not been effectively equipped. Uh, but presently now, Nigerian army now has one of the, some of the best equipment, uh, some of the best weapons in the world. And uh, also, I think the morale also has been strengthened. Uh, we've discussed about welfare. And I think a, a great deal has gone into welfare for the soldiers also. And then yeah. from, from all indications, they've been doing well. And I'm very, very sure that if you sustain this level, this tempo, I'm, I'm very sure they will. But Emmanuel, is it, is it really um, unfair to distance politics from all of this? Because, I mean, for anybody watching, it's just interesting that elections are here, you postpone elections, and suddenly everything is working. Do um, you blame anybody who ties those together? No, I don't, actually. Um, it's also very painful because if you had done this earlier, a lot of lives would have been saved. So you Tens cannot... Of thousands. Yeah, exactly. So let me just put it in simple language. You cannot separate the two. Um, obviously, there, there are political motivations behind this. And what is really unfortunate for us in Nigeria is that uh, we're not bold enough to ask these questions. And the challenge I have, I have is that, okay, so even after the election now, with the precedent that we've had, or the antecedent, sorry, it means that maybe we might go back to the same state, since, after all, we now have the... I mean, if, if he wins, 
there's no more, there's nothing to fight for. So well, we, just well, well, we, we hope we don't get to that. <laughs> <laughs> but let's focus exactly. on the reason why you're here. I know we're not here to talk politics. Exactly. We're here to look back at um, what was an unfortunate uh, incident in Nigeria's history last year. About this time last year, we lost uh, a number of lives. Um, I think about 15 of them, I'm not sure of the exact number now, across Nigeria when these exams were held in stadiums and lives were lost. A lot of people got injured. Nobody got the jobs eventually. I don't know. Mr. President did promise a few jobs to some family members eventually, but we don't know what's the situation with that. Do you think Mr. President has handled this entire episode well? The minister is still in office. A lot, people thought he was going to be fired. What, what do you think he should have done differently? Has it done right? Uh, the, the first and foremost, the issue of the immigration uh, recruitment is hard is uh, an unfortunate incident. I have, um, I have uh, individuals that I that also attended uh, the exercise in Lagos. And it actually shows that as a nation, we are, we is not, it's, it's not just that we haven't gotten there. As a nation, we have failed. Uh, we have failed because if this m mass of individuals, Nigerians, uh, can feature in uh, an immigration recruitment, and they are up to 700,000, then it questions our democracy, it questions, uh, it questions governance. However, I think it is important also that uh, uh, we put blames on who we should put blames on. And Mr. President also deserves some amount of blame. Um, in my, if we, don't, we, we should not blame him directly for the recruitment or for the uh, mis, uh, mismanagement or the misorganization of the recruitment exercise. We shouldn't because uh, we know as gov governance work is not the one that is directly responsible. However, I think why Nigerians will blame him for his inability or his in, in, in ineffectiveness is still having someone like uh, Moro uh, Abamuru yeah. as a minister of interior in this country. Someone that was directly or indirectly responsible for this mishap is, is shocking. Yeah, but the minister did offer a lot of explanations as to why things went that way. There were no venues to accommodate the number of people that applied for these jobs and he tried to make sense of it. I don't know if a lot of people bought his explanations, mm -hmm. but obviously it looks like Mr. President did and has left him there. D was it honest on him to resign or was it honest on Mr. President to fire him? I don't know. Hmm. Um, in, in more developed countries, if you notice, uh, once anything happens and it's under anybody's watch, the first thing he said, I resign. I mean, uh, recently the uh, police chief of Ferguson, considering what happened, had to resign. You know, just on it, of course, a lot of pressure. The ideal thing, I think, what would have been ideal is for him to have resigned. And if he did not, um, and the president didn't fire him, then I, I wouldn't want to start. Uh, I mean, I don't want to go into the details of why, but I would rather just stick to the side that I think he should have resigned. But what should he have done with those exams? I know we've talked a lot about it. We talked a lot about it last year. You know, doing it online and all of that. But the logistics are intense. We know how many people applied for those jobs. Mm -hmm. Should, secu should the stadium should have still have been used, well, maybe with better security? So, so let me ask you a question. People write German work. Do they write German works in the stadiums? No. Technology has come a long way. I mean, you can, you can organize tests um, in massive scales. You know, you can do them in stages. And so when you break them in stages, you can have screen up to a certain point. You can't tell me that out of the positions they're looking for, they cannot screen up to a certain amount using, you know, without leveraging on technology. So there's no excuse for that. I think it's just some people, sometimes these things that happen inappropriately because there are in, uh, in, interests in these things. People have uh, what they call um, entrenched interests. Yeah. So maybe the contract for you know, using logistics is higher than if you use technology, and, and people would rather defer to that. So those are the things that come into play, in my opinion. But of course, technology could have been used. That's the answer to that question.